Hey everybody, welcome to the Uncommon Truth Podcast. I am here, Luke, your host, along with Stephen, Vicky, or Solo. Welcome, welcome. Hello. We are back together this week. Yes, and we're just none the wiser. Yeah, <laughs> none the wiser. Is that right, Steve? <laughs> 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 none the wiser. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. People do say that, though, don't they? None the wiser. None the wiser. Have they said it about you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Recently, yeah, none the wiser. Does that mean you just never, I, you know, you don't learn your lesson? I guess, I guess it's a silly thing, but I've heard it. <laughs> Have you ever heard that? Yeah, none the wiser. I don't know if that means you were singing a song earlier. Do you want to do it on the podcast? Oh, about um, what was it? What I, rose I, garden, I something about a rose yeah, garden. I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. Yeah, I think that'd be a good song if I beg your pardon. Jesus never promised you a rose garden, right? And if you're old, you remember who sang that. I think it was Peggy Lee, but I'm not sure. I don't know. Yep. How are you feeling? You're sick today? I am so a little unwell. But it seems like everybody is struggling through a cold season right now. Yes. Yeah. So I think Jesus does promise you a rose garden. Does he? It's, it smells wonderful. It looks wonderful. It can be very awesome. The rose petals are go so pick, beautiful. Go pick, a, go pick a rose. But just don't fall into it. <laughs> don't let it fall on you because it's got thorns. It'll or don't bite, pick the rose. It's going to bite you. <laughs> If you don't obey the principles right. of rose gardens, you're going to have some blood. Which is a great segue into what you're talking about. I yeah, imagine. let's talk about that. Yeah. Is. Well, why not? Why where, not? where are we at, Luke? We are in Luke. 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 Reading Luke. Luke 14. I'm going to start in verse 25. Do you think you were named after this guy? I'm pretty sure that I wasn't. Real? Oh. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I was going to say yes. How did they even I know the name yes. Luke if they weren't naming you after him? But, I mean... Maybe. We know. have a son with Down syndrome named Mark, and, every, and when Steve was in the book of Mark, every Sunday he'd come up and take a bow. Remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, because yeah. we're reading from Mark, so he'd jump up. <laughs> yep. Jump up, front, and take everybody would be so gracious with him. I'd ask his siblings to tackle him, hold him down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness he's the only biblical name. Yeah, yes. Wow. Well. Yes, I didn't grow up in a Christian family, so I don't think that was the purpose of my naming. <laughs> but maybe, who knows? Anyway, all right. Uh, this is Luke 14, starting in verse 25. Let's go. Now large crowds were going along with him, and he, being Jesus, turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who observe it begin to ridicule him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or... What king, when he sets out to meet another king in battle, will not first sit down and consider whether he is strong enough with 10,000 men to encounter the one coming against him with 20,000? Or else, while, there is, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. That would be smart. So then, none of you can be my disciple. Sorry, yeah, none of you can be my disciple who does not give up all his own possessions. You might as well just keep going. Well, that's, no. that's plenty. <laughs> what? I mean, there's only one Do more little you, why, did, why don't you read it? Go ahead, Steve. Therefore, salt is good. But if even salt has become tasteless, with what will it be seasoned? It is either useless for the soil, it is useless either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. There you go. I think yep. you, we probably should listen. Yeah. That's the scripture. Yeah. <laughs> there it is, Steve. You know, it's very, very much needs the question answered about hate his own father, mother, mm -hmm. wife, yeah, bro that's right. father, mother, brother, sister, sons, and daughters, right? What does that mean? Um, it, it's like do I, if, none of us qualify. Mm. We can't hate. We're not really supposed to hate. That's right. So there's a definite word translation problem here between Hebrew, Greek, and English, right? And so what this really means, and is really clearly means, is you uh, cannot love more. Mm -hmm. Anyone who cannot love me more than father, mother, brother, sister, sons, and daughters, wife. Isn't one of the Gospels actually say it that way? Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, it's pretty clearly what he means, but this translating it this way, hate his own father and mother, just is crazy, but yeah. it's... 
If you can't love me more than them, you cannot be my disciple. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, you know, carry your own cross, come after me and deny yourself. Cannot be my disciple. Which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, that whole mm -hmm. thing, uh, what king doesn't go out, you know, count the cost. Yeah. The cost is, and he continues, does, who cannot give up all their possessions. Does that mean all their possessions? Yeah, so, <laughs> so then none of you can be my disciple who does not give up all of his possessions. Well, what that, to, means, can, yeah, what that means is very clearly, who cannot turn it over to the Lord. Mm. Uh, he says, give it to the poor. Because if you give it to the Lord, it's in danger of going to the poor. And here in America, we've become very sour on that. We want the government to take care of the poor. But my stuff, you know, hmm. I, I pay it. my taxes. I don't yeah. need to take care of the poor. I pay my taxes. The government will take care of the poor. And I think that's become a pretty worldwide position, you know, that the government yeah. takes over for the Christian and makes it not the Christian's responsibility to respond to the poor. And it says, you cannot be my disciple. And I think a person would have to be very careless not to take heed of this. The builder not finishing the race. Mm -hmm. It's about Jesus saying, he who overcomes to the end, he who perseveres, he who endures, Crazy. he who cannot finish. You, you, you're going to say you're making all your possessions to the Lord's or you can't be his disciple. And it doesn't matter how you preach this. You can share this and people just walk out the door and they come <laughs> back and they it. say, what a great sermon. And they come back and they say, I love these stories you tell. They <laughs> challenge me so much, but nothing changes. Mm -hmm. Wow. You fool. Today, your soul is required of you. Now others will take your possessions and possess them. You will not take any with you. And it's so clear. I mean, it's, it's so weird to bullet, read to read the gospels and then go to a church that doesn't preach the same thing it says you know like st store up for tomorrow for your retirement equities uh you know investments uh, what's that called in annuities Annuities. savings Pension. you know you're oh, a yeah. fool uh, quoting so uh, solomon uh, you're a fool who doesn't take care of the future and leave an inheritance for your grandchildren mm -hmm. your children and grandchildren and then Jesus says stuff like this. It's not even mine to leave. It's his. And he's probably going to, if, if I will listen to him, he's going to probably give it to the poor. In our case, we were under it for quite a few years in the middle. We were, you know, very well off. And then uh, economic crash put us down under. We floated back to the surface pretty easily. With, I mean, it was with ease. We walked out of a court going, what? We're pinching ourselves. Is, is this heaven? Mm -hmm. You know, this is crazy how this worked out. And then we just kept floating, floating higher up, further up and further in. And it's just like, this is crazy how good this turns out to be as long. And then it, it was like it all came back and and it was and it's what you were you were a, all of your possessions, all of your stuff, everything that you lost. And then a fire takes it <laughs> and you're like, well, OK, it was yours. Yeah. You know, we did that the first time the government, the banks took it, but it was yours. It wasn't ours to hold on to. And. If a fire takes it. It was yours. Why did you let your house burn down? Well, whatever the reason was, it's your house. Mm -hmm. That's right. What are we going to do? He says, I want you to build a new house, and I want you to live in it. Oh, I'm, he gives to the poor. He gives to us. <laughs> yeah. We weren't poor by any sta anyone's no, standards nah. by that time. I'm just no. kidding on that one. You know, uh, and we get to live in this wonderful house. But what's funny is the debts of that economic crash were wiped out by the fire. Mm -hmm. It was crazy how much was wiped out. We paid it all off. It was it was astronomical and ended up with a, a better house than we had before. And it's just when you follow the Lord and you say, all my possessions belong to you. And thank you for letting me have these possessions. Thank you for letting me be the steward of your stuff. Your and stuff. then I will do whenever you want me to give it. You just tell me and I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll move it around where it's supposed to go. Mm. Okay. And um, that makes you salty. Yeah. That makes you useful. Oh, useful. Good. You can actually be used to break down poop. Crap. You're you're a useless, I mean, a you very, very, very useful person in the kingdom of God. You win battles. Yeah. You finish buildings. You finish projects Good. because you're hungry. Mm. You don't have all this money and all this stuff. It all belongs to the Lord. And, and it, it's not yours. You just get to use it. That's good. And so 
you're not wealthy. You're not a rich man. My and fa- our father is. Yeah, our father is. And, you know, I Doesn't can count happen. on my kids can count on me. Even if they're not good to me, they can count on me. I will take care of them. And uh, I will always love them, even if they don't love me back. And my father will love me. He's just like he's better than I am. Yeah. And he will love me even when I'm not doing it right, you know. And he will love me. And and so I know he can, he'll take care of me better than I would ever take care of human children. He will take care of me. And that's really what this is all about. But it's kind of like I mentioned on Sunday, Scared Straight. Scared Straight is this documentary that they have made 15 of them now where they try to scare kids. They're headed towards prison and they try to scare them into lawfulness and not go to prison. And I think I was I wasn't even a, a, a lawbreaker and I was scared straight. You know, I never wanted to break the law. I didn't ever want to drink anything or take drugs because I didn't want to get screwed up with this stuff. And I didn't want to go to prison because those guys scared the crud out of you. Well, manure. yeah, they but, but the, the recidivism rate in America <laughs> is so high where they get out of prison and go right back because it doesn't work. Scared, scared straight doesn't work all the time. Mm-mm. Worked for me. It doesn't work for everybody. Then you read these things. You cannot be straight. my yeah. disciple yeah. if you don't carry your own cross. Yeah. Well, I don't want to go on a cross, but I got to not only do I got to be nailed to it, I got to carry it, too. And am I willing? Am I willing to carry my cross? Am I willing to deny myself? Well, do you want to be his disciple? Because it says here, you cannot be. Unless. And, and, and you cannot be if you don't carry your cross, if you don't love him more than family, if you don't love him more than heritage, if you don't love him more than name, if you don't love him more than your possessions, if you don't put him on the throne, you can't be his disciple. And I just don't understand why that doesn't scare you straight. Hmm. Why doesn't that scare you into the arms of Jesus? Why doesn't that, why do why people continue to walk away from Jesus? Why don't, how can you read what he writes in all these verses about the judgment at the end of the world? I mean, it's crazy. People get tired of my sermons because it's like so much promised judgment, so <laughs> much promised recompense. It's like, you know, I, I don't really need to apologize because I didn't write the Bible. <laughs> I'm just reading it verse by verse to you. It's awkward. And it's crazy. How come these warnings don't scare you straight? How come they don't make you want to be the best disciple in the land? I want to be known as a lover of Jesus. And I think that's probably problem number one. No, not too many people are teaching discipleship is loving Jesus. Obedience. They mostly teach discipleship is being loved by the Father. Mm. When discipleship of Jesus Christ is loving Jesus Christ, and how does he feel that you love him? Obedience. Through obedience. What is love to Jesus? People doing what he says. Okay. People doing what he says to do. That's what he considers love. And you don't, you really just, I mean, no, not too many people want to hear that obedience is love mm. or obedience is necessary. Right. But loving Jesus is the first one on here. If you don't love me more than everybody else. So you're going to, you're going to live a fast life loving yourself and loving everything else more than him, more than obedience not even concerned with showing him love, with with just lavishing him with your love, but concerned with what's he got for me. And I think these verses are so clearly, clearly stating this. And it's like, why doesn't this concern you? Why does it? I mean, we can we we're talking all the time about people who went almost to the to the narrow door and turned around and went right back to the world. You, while you were here, I read hundreds of things that was the outcome of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Why, you, why didn't you believe them? It's, it's so conditional, you know. I mean, we hear, you know, I, we, we've been saved for a long time, almost half of a, is it half of a century, 50 years? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so, con- it's so, now the narrative is so unconditional. And yeah. the first step in asking Jesus in your life and him f- dying on the cross, and that is, you know, he gives that, you, you repent, he comes into your heart. But then what do you do with it? Right. And for these, if you just read it, it's like, 
it's conditional. And who, you know, the, I'm, I'm glad Steve said it. It's, it's, you know, whoever does not love their father, mm -hmm. mother, my sister, brother, children more than me cannot be, cannot, cannot be my yeah. disciple. There is no way to um, reconfigure that no. uh, statement or the next one. You know, uh, if you don't deny, pick up your, your cross and deny me, uh, deny yourself and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. And to me, it's like, those are so definitive mm -hmm. and it's all about action words. And, you know, it's like, I, I shudder, you know, and at the father's house for the last 25 years, we have done the gospels just contiguously or in line continuously. And every, every week it's, a, you know, the next line, the next, next, uh, scripture in line. And, and it's like, this is a narrative you need to read. Yeah. This is something that you should probably find out whether or not we're crazy and we're just so legalistic and, and you know, whatever, um, that we're so controlling we want people to, you know, to, to, to obey us or whatever. But it's like you need to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in context without anything else because it's so definitively clear of what it takes to be as his disciple. Mm -hmm. And it not, it's not everyone's going to make it. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, is going to make it. And that, like Steve said, that should scare you straight into the arms of Jesus mm -hmm. and say, oh, have mercy on me. I thought because I asked Jesus into my life 44 years ago that I'm good. And I, I mean, I just can't even imagine the tr uh, the tremble and the, trem the tremors people are going to have, the fear when they get to, to heaven and Jesus says, away from me. Wow. I never knew you. And he says, you were, you're a sheep and you're a goat. No, no, I'm a sheep because I'm a pastor. I'm a sheep because I, I fed people in your name. I'm a sheep because I believed all my life that you're, you're the Lord. Yeah, but you never acted upon it. You never really, you, you cannot be my disciple. Jesus is not a man that he should lie. It's like, so who's the liar here? Mm -hmm. Satan. He comes to kill Rob and his story. He's putting this veil over our eyes of Christians. We don't have to be this way. We don't have to live holy. Well, excuse me, but I'm going to listen to the author of this book, who you look at the old covenant, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. So just read the old covenant and say, thank God I'm in the new covenant, but I should probably know what the new covenant says. Mm. And so I probably should read the words of Jesus. And these things just, I mean, guys... You cannot be his disciple. Cannot. Possessions, I think, is probably the number one thing in America, England, and Canada, that we just love our possessions. I mean, I love, I love my nice chair. I love my car. I was just out today just, just thanking Jesus for every the chair I was sitting in. And it's like we love our possessions. And we think it's because we're American, British, or Canadian that that's afforded to us. And it's not. It's, it's, they're all his. They all need to be in play. Here, Jesus, thank you for letting me use your chair. Yeah. Thank you for letting me use your house. Thank you that I have lights on. You know, it's, we're such an entitled nations, and we're such entitled Christians, in my opinion. Me too. I mean, I'm working on this all the time. But I want to know what Jesus says because I'm a Christian, and he's called Christ. I'm called the little Christ. I want to know what Jesus says, and I want to live according to what he says. I want to make it through the narrow door, the narrow path. Not many find it. I want to find it. That's really good. The um, the aspect in this where he talks about building the the tower and going into battle. Right? There's a about finishing what you started, and we. I think you referenced really it a good. little bit at the start, Steve. Which can we talk about that a little bit more? That this isn't just a on Monday I said this, so it lasts for the rest of my life. There's a, there's a continual decision that I have to love him or that I have to carry my cross I have to give up my stuff oh, right it's, it's not just a one a one day decision it's a continuous thing can you talk has to be a lifetime yeah. commission a condition it has to be a lifetime condition and um, it really doesn't even start till you do it it's it says here you cannot be my disciple so a disciple is someone that's becoming in the image of Christ and uh, being being conformed into the image of the Son. Mm. And he says there three times, you cannot be my disciple. You don't even start till he, he's loved the most. You don't even start till your possessions are turned over to Jesus. What do you want me to do with them? You don't even start until, uh, what was the other one? Carrying the cross. Car until you carry the cross and deny yourself. And then 
be the man who can finish the job and the, and the one who can win the battle. So if I don't know that I can go to this gym and stay pure, I have to know that I wouldn't go to the gym. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I know I can stay pure, then I can go to the gym. But I have to be that man or I'm not going to be his disciple. Mm -hmm. If I go thinking, yeah, I'm not going to stay pure, but I'll ask forgiveness. I'll enjoy this. <laughs> That's not going to work out well, and you're not, you're not his disciple, so you're not being conformed into his image. It's real popular to say, well, you just believe with your heart, confess with your mouth. Well, I, th I think that that is true, very true, but the definition, the way we define it, has to include these, these other sayings. So how you say confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, has to be he's number one. Above mother, father, brother, sister, sons, okay. and daughters. He's above, he's above your own safety with the cross and the carrying mm -hmm. of it, the, the bearing of the burden. He's got to be a, uh, the, the, all your possessions right. that you're, you're planning every day to win and finish the job. Then, then you can be his disciple. So if you're confessing that he's Lord, you're saying he is the name above all names, that he is you know, your master, he's up That's there. the poop right, right there is the, it gets yeah. left out. Right. Your owner. Yeah. Your bond Lord. Yeah. Your bond Your master. Yeah. You were bought with a yeah. price. Mm -hmm. Vicky said bond servant. Yeah. yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. So how do we, you know, you referenced uh, Revelation where Jesus says uh, to the church, is right, to he who overcomes until the end, the end yeah. right? That then you get the reward. And you were mentioning the conditional aspect of this. So, how often, you know, we, we like, people like to throw around that God's love is unconditional and that Christianity is unconditional. So, but this is a point I know in John 14, where he says, if you love me, you'll obey me. He says, you know, if you do this, then I will do this. There's, mm -hmm. there's, there's quite a lot of these kind of promises that come with a Conditions. requirement or condition, right? So can you, if. how does that fit into Christianity today or, or how should it fit into our Christianity today? Just our understanding of the conditions of Christ. They how should you, be. How do you dispel the narrative that it's just yeah. unconditional? Well, that Christianity. Is where does that come from in the first place? Yeah. And then how do we get it right? How does we dispel? How does how do we dispel that as, as a 21st century church? Yeah. Um, I'm not too opposed to the way they come to God's love is unconditional to those who receive it, mm. it which is true. So, but. Or, or God's love to the earth, the sun, mm -hmm. the tides, the moon, the rains, the beauty, oxygen. Mm -hmm. I mean, his love is unconditional in those. You, no, matter what, no matter how evil you are, you get those. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The ocean is your plaything, your, 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 your d dwelling place if you want it to be, uh, no matter what you are. But... When they then take that love of the creation love hmm. and they uh, put it to father-son type love, hmm. now they've just completely gone off the boat, man. They've just stepped. They've, they've, they're out of pocket. They have walked the plank. They've been keeled. They're keel hauling themselves, man. They're crazy. Every single verse from Genesis to Revelation, I mean, especially if you want to read the Old Covenant, everyone's addicted to reading that. Every one of them says, if you obey, these blessings are yours. If you don't. If you don't, these curses are yours. And those curses are jaw-dropping. They're horrendous. Just read. It's crazy. And he doesn't change. He's and he says he changes he not. No. So you come to the new covenant. He says, to anyone who believes, and whoever sins can confess their sins and be forgiven. All by itself is not unconditional. If you sin, you still got to be forgiven. He who confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. And you have to confess. You have to intend. Paul says that you basically have to be sorry for your sins for them to be forgiven. That's a condition. And the love of God that is born by the cross, the offering is unconditional. Everybody's offered. I don't want Adolf Hitler offered grace. I want him to pay for the 50 million dead. I, I, I want him to pay for that. But God, on the death of Adolf Hitler, grace was offered to him. 
It, that's unconditional. It's offered. But to receive it, he doesn't get it unless he stops, drops, and rolls and said, what have I done? I can't believe. I'm so sorry, God. Is there any way you can forgive me? Adolf Hitler can be forgiven. It's unconditionally offered. The condition is you don't get to receive it without fulfilling the conditions to receive it. You have to be sorrowful. You have to be repentive. You have to ask for forgiveness. You have to confess and be forgiven. There's not much evidence that he did anything like that in his suicide, but... He could have. The part is that anybody can. The, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that yeah. part is unconditional, the offer. Natural law, gravity is yours no matter what. It's unconditional. Gravity is yours. And I'm telling you, hardly anyone thinks on a daily basis what a blessing gravity is. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because... You, you, you stay on the earth as it spins. It, you don't fly off into space. And you should fly off into space because it's turning really fast. And you should be just blown off. But you're not. It's unconditional. You receive God's love in that. But the grace of God is not by any means unconditional. Only in the offer. Everyone's offered grace. And if you have faith demonstrated in works of belief... Uh, the thief on the cross is probably the greatest example I know of stating Jesus as king. When you're in your kingdom, remember me. And today you will be with me in paradise. I mean, he did that stand with his enemies at his feet, holding weapons to make him hurt, mocking them. You just killed the king of heaven. And he made that statement out loud. That's an that's a act of faith, wow. belief that we are saved by grace and that through faith. And the thief on the cross, he exercised faith to receive grace. And Jesus proclaimed it. The only person I think he proclaimed it over. The other thief said, mocking him, said, if you're the son of God, get, get us off of here. Mm. This guy said, hey, don't talk to him like that. You and I deserve to be here. He's done nothing. I mean, think about how much faith is in his statement hanging before his enemies who had so much more power to hurt him. You know, they finally made him die. Their blessing being hung with Jesus is they didn't have to spend three days on the cross to die. Yeah. The Sabbath. So they honored the Sabbath and caused these guys to die quickly. Lots of blessings from his act of faith. But that's, in my opinion, this unconditional is just nowhere to be found. It is in every case, deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow me. Love me more than father, brother, sons, and daughters. Father, mo father, mother, brother, sister, sons, and daughters. And also it says, go and sin no more. So there's lots of, there's quite a few places it says, go and sin no more. Confess your sins for a faithful and just to forgive your mm -hmm. sins. You know, and it's like, it's like, you know, over and over again through the epistles and, and the um, New Testament, it's it's like, it's it's a verb. It's it's go go. Don't do this anymore. Turn from turn from your wicked ways. You know, it's not a it's not a get out of jail card every just because you want to go on sinning. Yeah, that's what scares me is that so many people. The narrative we've heard throughout the years is that yeah, I'm a Christian. I, I asked Jesus into my life 40 years ago. Yeah, but there's no fruit on your tree that would indicate that you, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. You live like hell. You live. You your choices are selfish and self centered. And of course, we fight with that all the time, our selfish and self-centered nature. But it's like, I want to take the words of Jesus as fact. I want to say that we're, they are, he's not talking in parables. He's not talking so you can't understand. He's literally talking in facts. And this scripture here in 1425 says, you cannot be my disciple. Oh, my goodness. If we just had that, if we we're on a desert island and we just had that piece of, of scripture, we could probably live a long time. I mean, it's it's just it's jaw dropping. Yeah. I, I, it's like the it's like the whole world just needs a a slap in the face with cold water of, of Jesus's truth, and just read the truth of Jesus and let it just change you, because it will. If you read the, in context, these words of Jesus, the letters of Paul, Peter, you know, on on, you know, it's it's just it's it's jarring to your soul, and the confusion will be gone. Yeah, it's almost like we become 
uh, too familiar with these words or too... They're bumper stickers. Yeah. Like too jaded. Sin we, we start to live with and it becomes acceptable to us almost. Correct. You know, and it's like... Huh. Those words... I'll judge you. ...cannot even <laughs> be said about 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 discipleship, about, about salvation. What words? Uh, unconditional love. Okay. I mean, the minute he says... You cannot be my disciple. Come on, disciple. You you can't call it unconditionally more. That all by itself. The second you say someone can't be unless something, it's not unconditionally more. It's conditional. It must have been some achievement they had to make right. to become that. Right. Because in the, the for the in the opposite, he, he's saying you can only be my, my disciple if right. you if you yeah. Right. If you can't yeah. bowl a three hundred, you can't be on my bowling right. team. It's no longer under, yeah. unconditional. Even you if got, he says you can't you bowl, gotta a, act. If, yeah. if you can't bowl a hundred, you can't be on my team. You got to act. You've got to re, you've got to reach up and figure out go bowl a hundred to get on the team if you want to be on the mm-hmm. team. And so discipleship is I want to be on Team Jesus. Yeah, that's good. I want to be with him, and he says you have to love me more. And and I honestly, I mean, I love my wife and I love my children and I I love my grandchildren, and it's pretty easy. But I can tell you that if I've done anything right in this world, I've loved him mm-hmm. every day of my life more than them. It's and, really good. and they've had to pay for that love. There's been a cost to them. And then if they want there to be, there's a benefit. Mm. Now, if they want to be a victim, they can go through a lot of hurt. <laughs> they can make themselves hurt because my daddy was a pastor and I had to I share him with the church. For somebody right? today. I had to share him with the church. Mm. Be and my that, dad, I, not my I, pastor. I, yeah, I'm and I'll, I'll, I'll get pastor. really angry with them sometimes when they just keep saying that I want my dad, not my pastor. Mm. And uh, uh, I'm like, there's there's not two people, you guys. There's <laughs> one. Uh, I am your dad. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it, I don't stop being your dad when I'm pastoring. Mm. Um, and all the benefits of your life, you know, even the prosperity how much resource we had in our control, and he would allow us to go on cruises and take them with us. And all of the benefits of their life. One of them got to play major sports all the way through college, and it took a lot of money to get to that college day. And um, and a lot of hours logged in the truck, driving to practices in yeah. different cities and games all over the place, right? And then the other one, you know, it just he's – we just we expended our life on them, and so all of these things you have are because I'm that man, because I love him more than you. It's good. All you have, so you sit here and complain. You can wallow in your tears and all that stuff, but or you can remember who it is I am and what that made you. And they, I think, unerringly believe what I'm saying in that. They aren't sitting there crying in their tears. Mm-hmm. They will bring it up, oh, and then we'll remind them, they go, oh, you know, you're right. I go, look at all the other families you know that their dad weren't, wasn't loving God more than them. How did that work out for them? How did their Christianity stand up in the days of, you know, these are struggling days in this world. How did their, how did their family end up? Did their five children all become Christians and love Jesus? <clears throat> no. Did their, you know, did the, the you know, so. So I, I just want to say, you know, I think the, I think not to be, I, I like that explanation. However, I, w- I don't want to lose the fact that the, it's when Steve said, if you're going to be in a bowling league, there's, there's mm-hmm. rules. If you're going to be in the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, there's rules. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be a Christian, there's rules. Mm-hmm. And why do we as Christians not want any rules? Why do we just want it to be unconditional and that that it's required nothing of us? Mm-hmm. When everywhere in life, anywhere you go, you go to a job, guess what? There's rules. And to be a Christian, there's rules. That's good. And I just, I just wanted to make that point because it just kind of struck me that the, as Christians, this is the only place we want to make our own rules. Mm-hmm. I'd say society today wants to make its own rules and everything all the time. Correct. Right? And, and that's, that's where yeah, we are. And that's, that's the anarchy. Yeah. That's called the anarchy. Into, yeah. Mm-hmm. Create our own the religion, too. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. And be victims. I right. mean, we can be victim. Everything good in our life yeah. can become victimized. Yeah. If we don't listen to these words of yeah. Jesus. You cannot be my disciple. Yeah. I think, to bring it to a close, I just want to read this one more time to Perfect. us. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. 
Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who observe it begin to ridicule him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Mm. Or what king, when he sets out to meet another king in battle, will not first sit down and consider whether he is strong enough with 10,000 men to encounter the other one coming against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So then, none of you can be my disciple who does not give Mm. up all his possessions, all of his own possessions. Therefore, salt is good. But if even salt has become tasteless, with what then will it be seasoned? It is useless either for the soil or the manure pile. It is thrown out. He who has ears, let him hear. So good. That is good. Well, thank you guys for yeah, great, listening great to us today. Uh, we we just we really want to be disciples of Jesus, and we take it really passionately and seriously. And we want to we don't want to sin anymore. We don't want to love him less than he deserves to be loved. Right. So if that if that's the journey you're on, we just bless you in that and encourage you to to join us and subscribe to this podcast. Share with your friends. Have a great week. See you next time. Have a great week.